All right, so this is going to be a pretty interesting episode. We will know what is recursion and how do we use recursion. These are the only two things that you need to know. Okay, so welcome to the episode number one. We will know what is recursion, how do we use it. But there are two rules that you need to follow. Rule number one, you should never watch this video again or any video which is saying that what is recursion, how do we use it. Okay, from now you will only solve problems of recursion and learn more about recursion. This is the last time you are watching what is recursion. Second rule is digest the entire information given in this video. I will keep it very short, very precise, but watch the complete video with focus and never watch this video again. These are the only two rules. Now, what is recursion? A function calling to itself is recursion. There's a formal definition, which obviously is not going to help us in interviews. So we will know what is recursion with the help of an example. So let us say you need to find a factorial of a number. Okay. You all know what factorial is. Those who don't know, I'm just quickly going to write it here. Four factorial is nothing but three, oh sorry, four into three into two into one. This is four factorial, okay? Now, four factorial can also be written as four multiplied by three factorial. Why? Because this entire part is equal to three factorial, okay? So let us try to write a function to find four factorial. Or let us say n factorial, where n can be any number. Okay, this function is going to be a very interesting function. So uh, let us name the function as f for simplicity. Never use these type, uh, these kind of namings in real programming interviews. I'm just writing it for simplicity. The function's name is f. It is going to take input n and it's going to return an integer which will be n factorial. Okay, now let us write the definition of this function. Okay, so uh, okay, as I saw that if I need to find n factorial, I can get help of n minus 1 factorial, right? I wanted to find 4 factorial, I can get help of 3 factorial. Somehow if I know 3 factorial, I can easily find 4 factorial. Somehow if I know what is 99 factorial, I will be easily able to find 100 factorial. As simple as that, okay? So if you know the answer for n minus 1 factorial, you will know the answer for n factorial as well. So let us first calculate the answer for n minus 1 factorial, okay? So n minus 1 factorial, how can we calculate that? We already know that we are writing a function. We are writing a function to find n factorial, right? We are writing a function to find n factorial. We are not done writing it yet. We are still writing it, but we can still use this function, okay? We are still going to use this function because we know that we are going to write this function correct. And if we write this function correct, we can obviously use it for any value of n, okay? So just trust yourself, just believe yourself that this function is going to give you the right answer, okay? After trusting that this function is going to give me the right answer, if I pass n to this function, it is going to return me n factorial. If I pass 3 to this function, it will return me 3 factorial, that is 6, all right? Now, we are trusting ourselves, we are trusting this function, we are getting uh, let's say partial answer partial answer or okay let us name it as partial answer partial answer is equal to n minus 1 factorial so calling the same function again f which is still being written okay it's not completed but still we are trusting it that after it is being done it will give me the right answer i'm trusting this function that's why i'm asking this function to give me the answer for n minus 1 factorial i'm asking myself this function is asking itself to return the answer for n minus 1 factorial, okay? Now, because we are trusting this function, this function is going to give me with the right answer for n minus 1 factorial. And what I will do? I will return, I need to return n factorial, right? So I will return n multiplied by this partial answer, okay? Partial answer, and done, that's it, okay? This is recursion, but there's a catch. What the catch is, please pause the video and let me know what's the catch, okay? All right, those who could not find it, I will tell you what the catch is. All right, so let us take a very small example to understand it. Uh, let's say I want to find two factorial, okay? I want to find two factorial, I'm passing two to the function f. Now the function f is being called with a value two. The function f start executing and we are at this particular line, the line number one. In this line, we make another call to the same function f, okay? And you know what happens when a function call is being made? A copy of that function is being created inside the memory. All these things we will discuss in detail in the next episode. I don't want to deep dive into how those things goes behind the scene. 
but just assume that a copy of this function x sorry of this function f is being maintained in the memory okay this is the copy this is the copy like the first copy because i am passing two now this particular function is making another call to the same function f with a value one okay so we are going to get f of one another copy in the memory okay now this function also behaves in a similar way and it goes to the line number one and it makes a call to the same function with the value zero all right so another copy is being maintained we will get another copy in the memory but this time the value is going to be zero okay what next this function again will behave in the similar way because eventually it is the same function right we are just copying the same function if you are aware of naruto it is just doing a shadow clone of itself shadow clone jutsu okay making a copy of itself so yeah what next this function is also behaving in a similar way it is going to this particular line and it is making a call to the same function f that means another copy will be created but this time the value will go to minus one okay the value will go to minus one i hope now you got the hint from minus one it will go to minus two from minus two it will go to minus three minus four minus five minus six till minus infinity and all these copies are being created in the memory and there will be a time when the entire memory will be filled and there will be a blast okay there won't be a blast but your computer might hang so you don't have to let this happen that's why you need to stop it at a certain point all right we know that we should not go to the negative negative side we should stop at zero because factorial of negative number is not defined it's an error so what we should do we should stop at zero so at this particular function i should stop i should not make further calls to minus one then minus two minus three i should not make those calls so how can we do this if you can let me know the answer in the comment section i can give you some giveaways okay pause the video give me the answer all right so we can do this by simply applying a simple if condition here if n is equal to equal to zero then don't even go to this particular line don't go there simply return from here factorial of zero is one we know that factorial of zero is one so if n is equal to equal to zero return one that's it don't go further and this is recursion this if condition is called the base condition and that's it okay you only need to know this much to apply recursion to several problems out there but yes uh, while reading the problem you should get the intuition that you can apply recursion in this particular problem that we will get to learn by solving multiple problems on recursion in this particular course all right i hope you like the video uh, make sure that you leave comments for sure and do like the video okay your comments motivates me a lot and i will try to increase the frequency if i find some really good comments in the comment section so all the best to you guys let us meet in the next episode oh yeah before that before that before that let us quote this okay we should not forget to quote this okay meanwhile you just like the video so yeah here is the problem statement the very same problem statement and we can code it so first of all we need to take the input n int n as the input c in n now we need to write the function f but this time i'm going to name it as factorial proper naming factorial factorial is going to take an argument n okay as we saw in the notepad first of all the base condition it is a must condition otherwise your recursion will go into an infinite loop okay if n is equal to equal to zero stop it return one from here you don't need to go you don't need to go to the line number six if it is equal to zero otherwise otherwise calculate the partial answer partial answer is equal to same function factorial same function with the value of n minus one okay and what we need to return we need to simply return n multiplied by this partial answer and this should give me the correct answer but here in the problem just read the problem statement carefully you will get to know that they can give us a negative value of n as well so we need to handle it here itself if n is smaller than zero then don't go anywhere simply print oops simply print see out error error okay that's it 
otherwise if it is not equal if it is not negative then in that case we can get the factorial using this function factorial factorial of n and see out this see out this all right i guess this is correct let me just quickly run this we will see then we will go to java it is correct okay I guess it was a pretty simple code. You will get the link of the Java and the Python code in the description. You can check that out. C++ code will also be there in the description. If you want, you can check that out. Okay. Like the video. Let us meet in another episode. Bye-bye. Take care.